Previously, in Exodus chapter 1, we learned that the Israelites were under slavery in Egypt. In fact, the Pharaoh ordered the midwives to kill the baby boys. And then, uh, Pharaoh made it a national policy that uh, newborn babies, uh, Hebrew babies, would be thrown to the Nile River. Chapter 2 talks about the birth of Moses. He was adopted by the princess or the, by the daughter of Pharaoh after he was found in an ark along the Nile River. And then Moses was raised up as a prince of Egypt. And then one day, he saw an Egyptian beating a fellow Hebrew. And he tried, he tried to help by killing the Egyptian and then hiding him later on. And the next day, uh, he saw two Hebrews were fighting, um, but one of them told Moses, who made you judge over us? Are you going to kill me just like you killed the Egyptian? And because of that, Moses was afraid, so he left Egypt and lived in exile in Midian, where he met his father-in-law, and then uh, his father-in-law uh, gave Zipporah to him in marriage. So chapter 2 summarized the 80 year, eighty years life of Moses. So from being a prince of Egypt, Nehemu Shang, shepherd of stubborn sheep. And meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, the situation in, back in Egypt grew worse. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out. And their cry uh, went up to God. So that is the background of the passage for this morning, which is chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. So for 40 years, Moses was a shepherd. He was a shepherd uh, for 40 years. Uh, he was doing the job, as you all know, the Egyptians find detestable. Kaya di, ang mga Egyptians, dili ganahan sa mga shepherd, shepherds. That's why Pharaoh um, allowed the Israelites to settle in Goshen. Well, as a shepherd, um, Moses learned to be patient in dealing with stubborn sheep, which is uh, magamit niya later on kay ang mga Israelo, mga gahay pod ulo. And then Moses learned humility as a shepherd. Remember, he was the prince of Egypt. He had everything in life, but suddenly, nawala tanan, nahimu siyang shepherd. And if you notice here, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Nagbantay si Moises sa kayupan sa iyang ugangan. So wala gibutang di rin na nagbantay siya sa iyang kaugalingon nga kayupan. So ibig sabihin, so for 40 years, Moses, we can say that Moses was not successful in life. So, Tama na siya dito na nagbantay siya o uh, kahayupan sa iyang father-in-law. He was a nobody. Remember in chapter 2, we knew the name of his father-in-law as Ruel. But karon gibutang Jethro. So, unsa mag ang tinood? Well, I think they're the, one and the same person. Ang Jethro is just like a title given, a formal title uh, considering his status. Kasi he is a priest of the Midianites. So, it's the same person. And then, Moses led the flock to the far side of the wilderness. Far side of the desert. The Bible did not mention, nga nun niabot man si Moses sa far side of the desert. Maybe that area is uh, grassy, daghan pagkaon para sa sheep. Uh, but the Bible did not say so. But definitely, it was not an accident that Moses was led by God to the far side of the desert. God did not meet Moses where he was. But uh, God brought Moses to the place where God was. Then Moses came to the mountain of God. So asa may mountain of God? Horeb. Okay, here's the map of Horeb. Uh, the other word of, for Horeb is Mount Sinai. So makita niyo Mount Sinai, diri sa, sa ubos. And then ang Midian sa uh, right side. So magtingala mo, uh, layo man ang Horeb or Mount Sinai sa Midian. So God led him there. It's not an accident he was there. And that is also the place where God would later on uh, give Moses the Ten Commandments, Mount Sinai. And it's also the place where God appeared 
to the Israelites. You know, when God is going to move in your life, He's not going to warn you. So, para kay Moses, it's just an ordinary day, nagbantay siya, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, God appeared to him. God called him. That is why we should always be prepared because uh, any day, any time, God can call us. So, walay ipili ang ginoo. We should be always alert. So, verse 2. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Nagpakita kaniya dito ang anghel sa ginoo sa dagway sa nagadilaab nga kalayo diha sa sampinit. Nakita ni Moises nga nagadilaab ang sampinit apan wala kini masunog. So magtingala mo, who is this angel of the Lord? The angel of the Lord, the word angel of the Lord appears 67 times in the Old Testament. This passage is the only time the angel of the Lord is mentioned in the book of Exodus. The angel of the Lord, he is unlike other angels. Because uh, itong angel of the Lord, um, he would speak the word of God and then he would use the word I. He would use the first person. People would recognize him as the Lord. For example, ng, ano, angel of the Lord, sa Genesis 16, di ba? Gimaltrato ni, Sa- ni Sarai, si Hagar, and then ni pakita ang angel of the Lord kang Sarai. Ingin siya, ing, ingin si Sarai, ah, ni si Hagai na mubalik sa imong master because, um, and you submit to her. And then Hagar would comment that uh, uh, he had, she had seen or hear, heard of the Lord. And then sa Genesis 22, story of about uh, Abraham, nang hapit na na-sacrifice ang anak niya, nagpakita ang angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord. So this angel of the Lord in chapter 3 verse 4 is referred to as the Lord or Yahweh. Kay makita ninyo sa verse 4 later on, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look. So ang angel of the Lord, gikonek na siya kang Yahweh, kay Lord. So, and then this angel of the Lord, nagpakita siya sa flames of fire. So kalayo. Ang kalayo, gigamit na senyales na naang ginoo. Just like uh, uh, yung pillar of fire. So, nagmanifesto ang ginoo sa kalayo. And the question is, why would God appear in the form of bush? Nga no, dilik na lang kwan, kanang oak tree or kanang pine tree or kandakong dako na punuan. Nga no, gipili niya ang bush. And then ang bush, usually, daghan na siyang mga bush sa, sa mga disyerto. Kwan siya mga thorny bush. Well, well, the Lord chose uh, bush, ordinary, ordinary thing. Because uh, He wants to uh, use ordinary things uh, and make it extraordinary. So, He gamit niya bush. And then, uh, Moses saw that, that although the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Ang burning bush, common na kayo sa mga desierto. Let's say, pag natamaan ng kidlat, musunog yun siya. Or, Siguro ang mga tao parang magpainit, uh, magsunog og mga bushes. But um, but but uh, note that Moses stopped and pay attention to the bush. He pay uh, he paid attention. Kaya kung wala siya nagpay attention, siguro pag gidad malang niya, wala na gipansin, wala na mabantayan. So gibantayan din niya. So verse 3, so Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight why the bush does not uh, burn out. Ingun siya, katingalahan, ngano wala man nasunog ka na nga sa pinit. Ako ragyod duolon o susihon. And then in verse 4, the Lord saw, di ba kanina sabi natin, angel of the Lord, tas biglang Yahweh na karon. So ang angel of the Lord, um, pwede interchangeable siya ni Yahweh, Lord. So when the Lord, or the angel of the Lord saw, that Moses had gone over to look, God called to him with, from within the bush, saying, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. Nga no, gitawag ng ginoo, Moses, Moses, nga no, dili lang, Moses, Moses lang. Well, kaning, uh, calling the person's name twice, this is not the first time, and the only time. God called Abraham, 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 and then Jacob, Jacob, and then Samuel, Samuel. 
pag gidobol ang pagtawag sa ngalan ng tao, it is uh, an expression of endearment or affection or friendship. So, it is uh, a way of saying that I am concerned for you. So, sabi ni Moses, here I am. In verse 5, kung sa inyo ni do not come any closer. Ayaw na pagduol pa. Take you off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Hubua ang inyong sandalias kay balaan ang lugar na imong ginatindugan. So, God commanded Moses to do two things. Do not come closer. Take off your sandals. So, duha ang commandment. So, in our culture, um, di ba, we only remove our shoes, sandals, pag we, if we enter into the house of a certain person. Pero kani si Moses, na siya sa disyerto. Ipahubo siya ng uh, yang sandal, sandals. So, why is that so? Removing one's sandals is a sign of respect. Sign of respect. Especially in the Middle East, um, to show respect, you have to remove your sandals. So, sabi ng ginoo, you are standing on holy ground. Kasi pasabot ng holy. Ang holy, pasabot na na, uh, it is the place where God's presence is. And the word holy appears for the first time in the Bible here in Exodus. Wala na siya. The word holy, uh, first time makita ninyo sa Exodus. Holiness, meaning the the, that place is set apart. Set apart. So holiness means that God has set apart that place for Himself. So maoto og ipa tang tang siya og sandals. And then in verse 6, ingo ng ginoo, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Ako ang Dios ni Abraham. Isaak o Jacob. Sa pagkadungog ni Inis, ni Moises, gitabunan niya ang iyang nawong kay nahadlok siya nga mutanaw sa Diyos. If you notice, God is the God of His Father, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Nakailata kay Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Kisa mo si Father. Your Father. Uh, God is referring to Moses' biological father, Amram. God was assuring Moses na kaning na ako ang Diyos ng imong amahan o imong mga ninuno. I'm the same God. I'm the same God who rescued you from the Nile River. Okay, hapit na ka mamatay, I, I was the one who rescued you. God's first words are a reminder of His holiness and His second words are the reminder of the past of Moses. So take note, nakabutang dere, I am the God of your, of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wala gibutang na ginoo na I was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Very important na word was and am. Kasi pasabot ana kay was, ibig sabihin patay na silang Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Pero ginamit the word I am, meaning even after the death of this patriarch, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God has a personal relationship with them. Remember, there was a time sa panahon ni Jesus, di ba, question siya sa mga Sadducees? Ang Sadducees, dili sila mutuo na na ay resurrection. Dili sila mutuo sa anghel, dili sila mutuo o uh, demons, angels. And they only believe in the first five books of the Bible, which is the Torah. So, gipangutanan gi, gi ng Sadducees si Jesus, assuming a, a man ha, has uh, seven, a man has uh, six brothers or seven sila, and then, yung panganay, gipangasawa ang Mrs. and then namatay ang panganay, sa ilang kultura, the second brother should marry the widow. And then sabi ng Sadducees, assuming namatay ang ikaduha. So ang ikatuloy, pangasawa niya ang widow. And then, sunusunod, mamatay tanan. So ang pangutahan niya, pag-abot sa langit, kinsa man ang bana ng babae. Is it the first brother, second, third, fourth, or seventh? And then sa itabag ni Jesus, nasayop ka kay sa langit, uh, people will not marry or nor be given in marriage. And then, sabi ni Jesus in verse 26, Now about the dead rising. Have you not read in the book of Moses, referring to Exodus, in the account of the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. 
So Jesus is saying that there is resurrection because God is not the God of the dead but the God of the living. And then nakabutang dere na hadlok si Moises tago siya. Well, sakto na pagibuhat ni Moises because in Exodus 33:20, ingon ng Ginoo, "You cannot see my face for no one may see me and live." So ganun kabalaat ang atong Diyos. Walay makita niya. Kung makita niyo face to face, mamatay gyud ka. So, sakto ra pagibuhat ni Moises, hadlok siya, nagtago siya. But there will be a time that we will see God face to face. You know, when is that? At the end of the age, when we will all stand before the throne, judgment throne, and that's the time that he's going to judge us. Either dito ka sa impierno o sa langit. So that's why wag na to paabuton dito, so we have to make a decision to accept the Lord. It's only through Jesus Christ who died on the cross that we are able to stand before God justified. Kay kung wala siya namatay, wala gyud tay pag-asa. We will go to hell because the wages of sin is death. Okay, so let's continue. Verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering. Mingon ang Ginoo nakita ko gayod ang pagantos sa akong katawhan dito sa Ehipto. Nadungog ko ang ilang pagpakitabang tungod sa mga tao nga nagapugos kanila sa pagtrabaho ug bugat. Ug naluoy gayod ako kanila tungod sa ilang pagantos. You know when people suffer, we wonder where is God? Asa man Ginoo nga nagipasagdan niya? But Here, makita nato sa Exodus that bisan naglisod ka, the Lord knows what is happening. He is concerned about us. Just like He was concerned for the Israelites. The Lord knows our pain and suffering and He is in control. Then sa verse 8, So, ang inyong naginoo, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians. When I say, I have come down, Busa, minaog ako. Well, hindi naman siya literal na munaog yun ang ginoo sa kalibutan, but it means that God is going to intervene in the human affairs. He's going to musulod siya, uh, makialam na siya. And then, um, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land of Egypt. Dan una ko sila, I will deliver them okay, into a good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Unsay pasabot ng land of milk and honey? Ang pasabot na it's a very fertile land, a very good land. It's a land that is very peaceful, abundant. Tanan nindot ni kayo. And the Bible lists six nations. Unum ka nasyon ang nagokupar dito. So ibig sabihin, dako kaya ang lugar. Kaya unong mga kanasyon. And then pahawaon ng ginawa sila tanan. And then, dito mo puyo ang mga Israelites. It's going to be a very big land. Imagine six countries. Tapos sila, sila lang ang mga puyo dito. It's a very good land. And in verse 9, And now, the cry of the Israelites has reached me. Nadungog ko ang pagpakitabang sa mga Israelinhon And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Ug nakita ko kung giunsa sila pagluto sa mga Egyptohanon. Verse 10. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Busa, ipadala ko ikaw, Moises, sa hari sa Egypto sa pagpagawas sa akong katawhan ng mga Israelinhon gikan sa Egypto. Remember in verse 8, Ingon na ginoo, I will bring them out of the land. Pero pagkabot sa verse 10, I am sending you to bring out the people. So kinsa mong ginoo, is there a conflict? Sa verse 8, sabi na ginoo, siya ko no magdala sa mga Israelinhon, pagkawas sa Egypto. Pagkabot sa verse 10, ikaw Moises. Well, there's no conflict. Because it is still the Lord who will save, pero ang gigamit niya, si Moises. Moises is just an instrument used by God to do the will of the Lord. And you know, so, oftentimes, God uses people to accomplish His purpose. Ang tao ang gigamit niya. Because the God who saves 
is the God who sends. The God who saves is the God who sends. Kita tanan, mga Christian, natay duha ka calling. Ang first calling nato is to be saved. Ang second calling nato is to serve the Lord. We are to serve the Lord. In fact, lahay-lahay atang role, may mga pastor, may mga musicians, may mga Bible study leaders, iba-iba, lahay-lahay. But all of us are called to share the good news. Diba? Remember the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20? Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is the command for everyone. And although it is God who will save, but God will use people like us to share the gospel to other people. So at the end of the day, naat good tayo participation og role. Maura gihapon kay Moises, ang ginoo ang mutabang sa mga Israelinhon, pero ang si Moises ang gigamit or gamiton sa ginoo. Then in verse 11, actually si Moises, una-una, nalipay siya na tabangan ng ginoo ang Israelinhon. Pero nung nahibaon niya na siya de ay ang gamiton, kung sa iyang reaction, sa, sa verse 11, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Apan miingon si Moises sa Diyos, Kinsa man ko nga muad to sa hari o mapagawas sa mga Israelinhon gikan sa Egypto. Who am I? Well, I'm sure Moses knows who he is. But I think um, he's saying that I'm not sure if I'm the right man for the job. I'm not sure, Lord. Ha? Ako? Ngano ako? Kinsa man ko? There are two possible interpretations uh, in the response of Mo- Mo- Moises. Ang un- unang possible interpretation is that Mo- Moses shows humility. Ipakita niya na humble siya na, Lord, di man ako kaya ni, na I cannot uh, do this thing. Remember before, when he was the prince of Egypt, he was impetuous, immature. Di ba? Uh, he wants to save the Israelites, ang gibuhat na, gipatay na Egyptian. And hindi yun nakagustuhan na ginoon. And you know that um, most of the qualified persons who are called by God to serve Him are most often than not uh, very reluctant, hindi siya sure. Because ang trabaho na ginoon, grabe giyod. So, no one can say that he is prepared to do the work of God. So, in that sense, pwede na ito ma-interpret na medyo humble si Moses na alam niya kakayahan niya na, uy, disod man eh. Pakinsa man ko, di na ko kaya. But another interpretation is, kwan, um, Moses was just making an excuse. That's another interpretation sa iyang tubag. Na, na wala siya salig sa ginoo. Ano, ano ako man? I can't do it, Lord. Um, you know, yung feeling na inadequate, inadequate, inadequate ka, the feeling of inadequacy is normal. Bisan siguro, bisan kinsa man, pag gitawag ng ginoo to serve, parang ano, parang initially, you will feel that you are inadequate, you don't have the enough uh, ano, um, knowledge, enough skill, but nonetheless, musalik ta sa ginoo, kay kung gitawag yun ta sa ginoo, He will equip us for the work that He is going to use us for. Because ano, um, there are two responses mga God pag gitawag sa ginoo. Pwede ang response is overconfident ka, ah, kaya na ko na, kaya da, sayo, sayo naman na. Another response is you are, you have no confidence. Di na opposite. So dapat tunga-tunga. Dili ka pwede overconfident, dili po ka walay confidence. Dapat, mus- mus- you, have, should, you should have the proper attitude. You should have the proper attitude and say, I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13. So, dili ta magpahambog, dili po ta uh, parang walay confidence kaayo. So, we must realize that salvation belongs to the Lord. The Lord is greater than our inadequacies. He is greater than our inadequacies. He is greater than our lack of experience, lack of talent. We have to trust in the Lord na siya ang mutabang nato, hatag o um, uh, kaalam o uh, pamaagi para gamiton ta niya. So, unsay to bag ng ginoo niya in verse 12. And God said, I will be with you. You know, God could have told Moses, ayaw ka bala ka Moses, kaya lagi ni mo. Ano ka? You are prince of Egypt, you have good education in Egypt. 
you are the best person to help the Israelites. Kay gikan na maka sa Egypt. You know how the Egyptians think. Pero God never said that to Moses. Wala ni ingon na ginoo na kay Moses na unsa yung abilidad. But ingon ng ginoo, I will be with you. So in other words, God is saying, yes, you are right. You are correct. Listod ning ipabuhat na ko nimo, pero ako mukuuban ko nimo. I will be with you. Magauban ako kanimo. You know, the call to God, to God's service always comes with a promise of God's presence. If you are called by God to serve Him, the Lord will be with you. Dito gin mahibaan kung tinood, gitawag ka sa ginoo. Kay uh, ubanon ka sa ginoo. So dapat dili ka mahadlok. You, you should not feel ashamed or you should not feel that you are inadequate, but you have to allow the Lord to use you mightily. Even in the Great Commission, di ba, ingon ko na, kita tanan, we are called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But ingon ni Jesus sa Matthew 28 verse 20, Surely I am always with you, even to the end of the age. Gisugo ta na magsangyaw sa pulong sa ginoo, pero gipramis ta na ubanon ta niya. In the same way kay Moses, Moses gisugo siya ng ginoo, pero giingnan po siya na I will be with you. So when the Lord calls you, you are sure that tabangan yuta sa ginoo, He will be with us. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Ug mao kini ang mahimong timailhan nga ako ang nagpadala kanimo. Kung mapagawas mo na ang mga Israelinhon gikan sa Ehipto, magasimba ka mo kanako dinhi niining bukira. Uh, which mountain is uh, God referring to? Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai. Moses asked for a sign and then God told him the sign that I have chosen you is in the future you're going to worship me here. Pero magtingala mo, paano naging sign yun? Di ba ang sign is dapat makita mo na? So ang sign is future. How, that, how would it help Moses? Pero hindi pa niya makita, future. So God is saying that um, this sign you should only receive by faith. Magtuo ka lang ka na ako. It's true that you will not see the sign. It will happen in the future. The confirmation will happen in the future, but you have to walk by faith. You have to walk by faith. You have to simply take my word for it. Since giingon ako, akong buhaton. You have to tuo lang ka, ka na ako. And then in verse 13, ingon ni Moses sa ginoo. Suppose I go and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Pananglit. Okay, pananglit. So safe kay siya na pananglit. Huwag ko siya niyo na, yes Lord, pananglit. Muad to ko. And then pangutanan ko. Kinsay iyang ngalan. Unsa may akong itubag kanila. Moses asked two important questions. The first question is, who am I? And the second question, who are you? So I think, very important question. Sabi na, suppose I go. So hindi pa siya sure. <laughs> so hindi pa siya sure kung dawaton niya, dili. Magtingala mo, why did Moses ask the name of God? Pero kung mabasa ni mo ang rest of Exodus, wala mang ipangutan na po niya. Wala, wala po siya ipangutan sa mga Israelin ho, sing nga sa Ginoo. Maybe, uh, maybe Moses ha- has forgotten the real name of God, or Moses was unsure who is the God who is calling him, or I don't know. Um, or maybe the Israelites need to be reminded of the Lord. But nonetheless, ipangutan na ni Moses, ang sing ni mo Lord, kinsa man ka Lord. Um, perhaps at that time, di ba, remember the Israelites were in Egypt for 400 years. So during those times, daghan na sila na ilhan mga Diyos, Diyos sa Egypto. So possible, um, wala na yun, nalimot na yun sila kung kinsa yun ang Diyos nila. So mauto, siguro, just to be safe lang, pangutanan na ako para mahibaan ng mga Israelin noon, kinsa man yun ang ngalan ng ato. Kinsa so, yun ang ngalan sa atong Diyos. And ikot ha, it's also important that you know the name of your God. Kasi knowing the name of your God, it gives you the power to invoke the help of that God. Remember Jesus when he said that when you pray, you pray in my name. Because you're asking the help of that name. And sabi niya, I, I will do it. John 14, 14. 
So importante may bawa na to unsay ngalan. In verse 14, si tubag ng Ginoo. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Sabi ni saya, ako ang Dios nga mao sa gihapon. Mao kini ang imong itubag kanila, ang Dios nga mao sa gihapon, mao ang nagpadala kanako ngadto kaninyo. The words I am are based on the Hebrew words or Hebrew verb to be. Well, the name speaks of the sufficiency and eternity of God. God is an uncreated being. Wala nag naghimo niya. You know, sometimes, for example, let's cite for example, I am who I am because of my past. I am who I am because of my parents. Okay? I am uh, alive today because I eat. So, nai rason why I am. Pero ang ginoo, I am who I am. Um, I don't need the cause. He is self-existent. God is self-sufficient. God is eternal. God is sovereign. So, etong pangalan na ginoo, it represents the character and reputation of God. God is immutable. God is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Maura gyapon ang ginoo. So, mauto, sa inyong siya, I am who I am. Ako na giyod. So, in, ang other translation ng I am who I am is uh, I am because I am. Or I will be what I will be. So, dili ni filosofo na tubag ha? Filosofo mo sige no? But no, this is who he is. He speaks, this speaks about the character and nature of God. I am who I am. Okay, let's go verse 15. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. The name of the Lord is YHWH. Um, sa karon, people do not know how it is pronounced. Um, because the Israelites um, are afraid to um, pronounce the name of the Lord for fear that they may take the name of the Lord in vain. That is why give replace nila ng, ng word na Lord. It is known as Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton, four letters. No one knows for sure how, how it is pronounced. Ang um, gipronounce na to as Yahweh. Um, nung gitranslate ang Bible sa Latin, ang YHWH na himong JHVH. That's why Jehovah. Okay, Jehovah. Although, to be strict about it, hindi yung tamang pronunciation. Kasi ang kasi wala yung J sa Hebrew. Jehovah is not an accurate translation. So, yun nila Yahweh, yun nila Yahowah, Yahowah. So, honestly, we don't know. But does it matter? Does it matter? Does it matter? Does it matter? Because you can always call our Father, Father. Our Father in Heaven. Diba? So, yun na kanindot na. So, um, it's going to be a mystery, but mahibaw na ito, pagkabot na ito sa langit. And uh, I just want to share this one. Ang Hebrew is, you read from right to left. Parang uh, Chinese, right to left. And I think Arabic also. If I'm, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, ha? Y-H-W-H. Ang first Y is Yod. Yod means hand. He means behold or look. W or Vav means nail. And then He means behold. So, in other words, Yod, Yod, He, Vav, He, behold the hand, Behold the nail. Look at the hands. Look at the nails. Who does it refer to? Diba? Jesus. Look at the hands of Jesus. The nail pierced hands. Look at the God whom you have pierced. So it's very interesting, no? Kasi yod, the name of Yahweh, kung isa-isa ni mo siya, it literally means look at the hands. It refers to none other than Jesus. Baka sabihin nila, ah, coincidence lang yan. Coincidence. But it's interesting. You have to know it. I just want to connect. In the New Testament, Jesus claimed that He is the I Am. There are several times in the New Testament that Jesus claimed that He is the I Am. There are seven times Jesus uh, made use of the word I Am in the book of John. 
Sabi na, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. So Jesus is connecting himself with the I am. And ang pinaka klaro na, na gigamit ng word I am is in John 8:42. Remember on one occasion nagdebate si Jesus og mga religious leaders and then uh, ang kalaban niya na ingon na kami mga anak ni Abraham. Ingon ni Jesus kung kamo anak ni Abraham dapat you would love me higugmaon ko ninyo. Because I have come here from Father, from God. I have not come on my own. And then nagingon si Jesus sa verse 56 of chapter 8, John, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. And you know, nila, you are not, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham. In verse 58, ingon ni Jesus, very surely I, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am, I am. Ang mga Jews nakasabot sila unsay pasabot ni Jesus, I am. At this, they pick up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. You can find that in John 8:56 to 58. Jesus was claiming to be the God uh, of Moses, the great I Am, being referred to in the book of Exodus. And the religious leaders know exactly what Jesus meant. That is why they thought that it was blasphemy. Well, actually, blasphemy yon. Kung dili tinood. Pero kung tinood, that is not blasphemy. So, John 8:58 is a clear claim of Jesus' deity. There are other sect religions that claim that Jesus is only a man. But that is not true. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the second person of the Trinity. And we believe that He is God. He is part of the triune God. Jesus claimed equality with God Himself. Sabi na, I and, the fa- I and the Father are one, John 10.30. Nakasabot ang iyang audience. And then in Revelations 1.8, ingon ni Jesus, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. I am the great I am. So, so who is the great I am? God Almighty, but also Jesus. So we have to know that. Kung, if there's a takeaway for this sermon, Jesus is the great I am. Okay. So after answering the two questions, who am I and who are you, then God proceeded to give details. Say, dapat buhaton, detalye. So in uh, chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, makita na to na God told Moses what he has to say to the Israelites and then from 18 to 22, what he has to say to the Egyptians. Okay. So, basahin na ito. Ano sa may mensahe ng ginoo sa mga Isra- Israelites? Verse 16. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and I have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. Verse 17. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. A land flowing with milk and honey. Makabantay mo, verse 16 and 17 is a repetition uh, or similar to that in uh, verses 6 and 7. So, parang giutro. So, so, we will just uh, skip this one because we have already explained this one. And then in verse 18, the elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Mamino kanimo ang mga tigdumala sa Israel. Ug unya ikaw ug ang mga tigdumala mo ato sa haring sa ito ug muingon kaniya. Nagpakita kanamo ang ginoo ang Diyos sa mga Hebreo Hanon. So the elders will say, the Lord has met with us. Di ba? The Lord has only met with Moses. Nga nung muingon man sila na the Lord has met with us. Well, well, Moses is the representative of the people. So, if God has met with Moses, it is as if God has met with everyone. And then ingon siya, let us take 
a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. Busa kung mahimo tuguti kami sa paglakaw ug tulok adlaw ngadto sa kamingawan sa paghalad ngadto sa Ginoo nga among Dios. Wait a minute. Di ba ingon sa Ginoo, I will deliver you out of Egypt. I will save you out of Egyptians. Ngano nakabutang dere? Ngano ang isulti lang kay Pharaoh is mag day off lang sila. Three days day off para magsamba sa Dios. Ngano wala na lang isulti na uh, mahawa namin dere. <laughs> Mulayas namin. Is this a trick? Well, okay, we should not take this passage literally. Kasi, you know, in people in the ancient Near East, very gentle sila when they make, they don't make strong demands. They, they are gentle with the way they make their request. Uh, parang sa karon, uh, for example, you you will say that, pwede ko, uh, can, I, can I borrow the car key? When you say, well, can I borrow the car key? You're not just borrowing the car key, but you are also borrowing the car. Tama? So, parang ganon. So, pag sinabi natin, do you have time? So, pasabot na, I need your time. I need you to, I have a problem, I want you to listen to me, I need your time. Diba? Parang di- direct, no? Parang something like that. So, pag sinabi niya na, we're going to go three day, day off to worship, it is a subtle way of saying, muhawa na gidme dire. So, dili siya, very strong. So, and then, Pharaoh understood what it meant. That's why, nigahe ang kasing-kasing ni Pharaoh. Kasi kasabot siya, unsa ang pasabot na three days day off. Ang pasabot na, di na gidme mo balik. <laughs> okay. Um, and isa pa, this is important. The reason why, I mean, the reason given to Pharaoh, why they want to leave Egypt, is so that they would offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. Remember, the central theme of the book of Exodus is that God saved His people for His glory. Gisalba ng ginoo ang mga Israelinhon para sa iyang himaya. Dili lang, well, siguro, apil na na para naluoy siya sa ilang kahimtang, pero ang pinaka-importante dere, is gusto ng ginoo, isalba sila para the people will worship Him. That is why later on in the book of Exodus, last part, God commanded them to, to create a tabernacle so that they will worship the Lord, so that His glory will be with His people. So, the main purpose of why God saving them is so that they will worship Him. So in other words, God is telling Pharaoh, you have to let my people worship me. And when Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go, it is as if Pharaoh is saying, I will not want your people to glorify you. That is why the book of Exodus is a battle between Yahweh and Pharaoh. It's not be- between Moses. Moses is merely the, the agent. It's between God and the prince, uh, uh, king of Egypt. And remember, king of, the king of Egypt, Egypt was one of the most powerful nations at the time. So it's, it's as if it's a battle between God and man. That is why the battle is very personal to the Lord. And makita ni mo, tanan, later on, grabe yun ang sa gino. Kay, the Lord is showing His glory to the people. And then verse 19, I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. Apan nasayod ako nga dili kamo tugutan sa hari ng Egypto, gawas lang kon may magpugos kaniya. Busa, silutan ko ang mga Egyptohanon pinaagi sa mga milagro nga akong himuon taliwala kanila. Pagkahuman, tugutan na niya kamo sa paglakaw. Nakabutang dali, unless a mighty hand compels him. This phrase foreshadows what is to come. And we know that there will be ten plagues of Egypt and that they will cross the Red Sea. So it's only through the mighty hand of God. So gituyo po na ginoo, and then we will later on find out that, that, that Pharaoh hardens his heart and then we will also find out that the Lord hardens Pharaoh's heart. Kaya ang purpose ng Exodus para mahimaya ang ginoo, para mugawas kung kinsa siya, 
the Lord is going to reveal His great and awesome power. And then in verse 21, And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward these people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Verse 22, Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters, and you will plunder the Egyptians. O siguruhon ko nga magminaayo kaninyo ang mga ihiptuhanon. Aron pag sa paglakaw ninyo, naamoy pabaon. God is saying that the Israelites will plunder the Egyptians. When you say plunder, kasi ang word na plunder, kasagarang gigamit na siya sa mga gera. No? Pag kumana ng gera, you will plunder your enemy. Spoils of battle. God is saying that we're going, this is going to be a holy war. This is going to be a war. Spiritual battle between God and the Egyptians. And then usually, pag plunder, usually mga mighty warriors ang mo, mo plunder. Pero ang gigamit nila, ang mga babahe na ang magplunder. Ibig sabihin, after the battle, inana na, inana na ka-weak ang mga Egyptians na ang babahe na giyod ang magplunder instead of mga men. So, it is, God is saying that it, the, the Egyptians will become so weak na ang buhato ng mga na lang mo and then maghatag na gano'n sila, mahadlock sila, hadlock. And, you, and this was fulfilled later on, no? And then, uh, dili ka gikawatan ng mga Israelites ang mga Egyptians? Dili naman siguro. Kaya nga, no? They were slaves for 400 years. So, ito yung mga kabayaran sa ilang servisyo. So, that is what will happen. And the same principle, no? Um, in the New Testament, no? When Jesus died for us, when He accepted the Lord, we are freed from the bandage of sin. Tama? And aside from that, the Lord will bless us. Jesus will enrich us. In Ephesians 4 verse 8, when He ascended on high, He took many captives and gave gifts to His people. Once we are saved, the Lord will give us spiritual gifts, such as the Holy Spirit. So, muundang sa ta, sa chapter 3, and this is, the story is not yet over. Meron pang continuation sa chapter 4. So, you know, what is our takeaway for today? Kung, kung namo'y mahinduman, is who our God is. God is the great I am. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that great I am, ni are sa kalibutan, diba? namatay sa atong sala, ni banhaw after three days, and because of Him, we have hope. He will save us from slavery, from our sin, and He will give us eternal life. So Jesus is the great I am. Jesus is the great I am. Let's give glory to the Lord because He is the great I am. Thank you very much, Lord, for your word. Truly, O oh God, um, after hearing your message, O oh God, you have revealed yourself to be the great I am. Gamhanan ka ginoo. Grabe ka, Lord. And we can see that we are in awe of you, Lord. And as we study the book of Exodus, may we be filled with awe of the holiness of the Lord, of the awesome power of our God. Because you are the God who cares, the God who hears all our pain and suffering, and you have concern for us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the ultimate sacrifice that you have done on the cross for our sins. And because through you, Lord, we are redeemed, we are saved, and we just want to give you glory, honor, praise, and thanks, Lord. Salamat, O Dios. We just want to surrender our lives to you. You are the great I am. Help us not to worry about what will happen in our life because he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. And we are very thankful of God that you are with us in our lives. Salamat, O oh Lord. And I pray for, your com for the comfort on your people, Lord God. Tabangan mo sila sa ilang mga problema, sa ilang kahintang, Lord. Na dili sila maluya kay ang ilang Diyos, ang among Diyos, gamhanan. Thank you, Lord. I just want to surrender everything to your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, all this we pray. Everybody say, Amen.